Hello everyone, good morning, afternoon, evening, or night, whatever time it is where you are. Today I'm doing a special video. This came about because recently I realized I was gathering a larger and larger list of interesting upcoming games that I'm keeping an eye on. And I realized that it probably would be interesting if I shared my list of upcoming games. Because most of them aren't most of them don't have a most of them don't have a particularly large amount of exposure. You know, I'm not, I'm not talking about like the newest Resident Evil or something, which everyone knows. You know, they know it's coming and they know about it. But there's a lot of interesting smaller games that chances are you haven't heard of. So my hope with this list that I'm going to go through is that you'll find some interesting games that you've never heard of, and hopefully when they come out, they will actually be good. That's always anyone's hope, of course. So hopefully you'll find something interesting. I'm just going to spend probably no more than a couple minutes on each. I'm just going to briefly go to the website and just explain what the game is and what I find interesting about it. And I'm going to have links to every single game in the description. So don't, you know, don't try and like madly scroll down the, the website address or anything like that. Don't worry. It's in the description. So let's, uh, let's start with the first one here. So the first one is Stasis, which is a really cool-looking um, top-down 2D adventure game set in space. It's a it's a horror game, and it's just, here. Let me play. Let me show you what it looks like. It has a really it, I love games set in space. I love horror games. Well, let, let me pause that. I love horror games set in space. It's just such an awesome atmosphere for horror, because you're, you know, out in the cold darkness. It's just a brilliant place to put a horror game, and there's not very many horror games set in space. So it's a great looking 2D, I guess, adventure horror game called Stasis. Yeah, and there's also a blog on the website which has a lot of interesting things, all sorts of game ideas and little tidbits about the game, screenshots and all sorts of stuff. Okay, so next game is Reset. This is a, well, as it says here, <laughs> Reset is a single-player co-op first-person puzzle game being developed by etc. etc. Yeah, first-person, uh, a single-player co-op game. I don't know exactly what that's going to be. It sounds interesting. I don't think the gameplay is fully fleshed out yet. It might be planned, but it's not implemented yet, so I'm not exactly sure what the gameplay is going to be. But the gameplay sounds like it will be interesting, and so far, the game looks extraordinarily beautiful. I mean, just ridiculously good. Look at some of these screenshots. Come on. Thank you, thank you. Bigger, please. Wow, why is it loading so slow? Uh, it's not my internet. Definitely not my internet. Anyway, yeah, look at that. It's amazing looking. And these are in-game, by the way. In fact, this is in-game. I actually had one of these as my wallpaper for a bit. This is an in-game shot. When I first saw the shot, I actually thought it might have been a real picture. Like, of real life, but no. When I read further, I realized it's actually a screenshot from inside of the game. Incredible looking. So, it should be an interesting game, and I'm looking forward to that. Next game is Wasteland 2, which I, chances are you probably already know about because of their wildly successful Kickstarter. So, I'm not really going to spend any more time on that. Just, uh, if you know about it, you're probably excited for it, and if you don't know about it, then check it out. Should be good. Next game is Cradle, being developed by Flying Cafe for Semi-Animals. It's a very interesting name for a company. Anyway, it's it's an ex well, it's a science fiction first person quest with freedom of movement. I would connect that down to an exploration game, which is awesome because I loved Dear Esther, and I don't think this really has that much in common with Dear Esther. But what it, what it does have in common is that it's an exploration game, where you have a well rendered environment that you explore. Although I think it's also a puzzle. Yeah, I think it's also a puzzle game, which Dear Esther obviously wasn't. But anyway, it uh, 
yeah, I love exploration games that have an interesting environment that you can explore in. That's I love that. Here's a little bit of the trailer. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Here we go. Oh, great, it rebuffered. Thank you, YouTube. Also awesome looking, and by the way, great music. I don't know if this is a track made specifically for the game, or if they took this from somewhere. It's probably made for the game. But I love the music. It's incredibly beautiful looking. Here, let me... There's an awesome bass line. Let's see. Here it is. I just love the mood of the whole thing. It just looks and sounds so interesting. It just looks like a vivid, strange, and fascinating environment to explore. So that's definitely one I'm looking forward to. Next on the list is Gone Home being developed by the Fulbright Company. Apparently the Fulbright Company made... Uh, what was it called? Bioshock 2 Minerva's Den, which I think was a DLC for Bioshock. And then after that, I think they started their own company, the Fulbright Company, and this is their first game. As an independent company. It's also an exploration game. Um, you play as a person who goes home, and I think, if I'm remembering right, I think you find that everyone's gone. And I think the rest of the game is you just exploring the house and looking at and understanding what's been happening in everyone's lives just by examining everything you find in the house. It, I do, it doesn't really sound, on the face of it, that might not sound all that interesting, but I, I love exploration. I, that sounds actually great to me. For some people, that might sound like the most boring thing in the world, but I think it's awesome. Here, let's look at part of a video. Oh god, that's loud. Do you just examine and explore a house? And learn all about the people that lived in it, or live in it, I don't know. Past tense, present tense, I'm not sure, I don't know the storyline. Obviously that is something you'll discover as you play. So much has changed. New house, new school. Worst of all, my big sister's gone for a year. It doesn't feel real. But I'm not gonna let it change me. I used to tell my sister everything. And if I can't do it in person, because she's off gallivanting around who knows where, I'll tell it to this journal. Just like... It just looks awesome. I can't wait until that comes out. So, next game is... Wait, are these, are these getting mixed up? What's happening? No, no. Uh, what? Uh, reset... Among, there you go. Among the Sleep. I was reading the wrong part. Yes, Among the Sleep is a, well, an interactive experience. Interactive experience, doesn't that just mean game? Anyway, yeah, you are playing as a two-year-old. It's basically a horror game where you play as a two-year-old. So here's part of the trailer. It looks great, it's just... That's such an interesting um, angle to take on a horror game that I've never even thought of or played. Normally you just play, you know, a person. A normal, standard height human being, but in this case you're playing a very young child and everything is... Everything is bigger than you. Everything's scarier, everything's stranger because you're a two-year-old. You know, everything eclipses you. I think that's a very interesting, um, I guess, angle, you could say, to take on a horror game. So I'm looking forward to see to seeing how, uh, how this turns out. It also just looks incredible. I mean, it's a beautiful game. I 
All right, next game on the list is Against the Wall. I don't know much about this game, as far as what you're actually going to do in it. I don't know how... I don't know how developed it actually is. But anyway, it's a first-person puzzle platformer set on the side of an infinite wall. And that is all I need to get interested in it. You are constantly climbing up an infinite wall. I don't know how the hell that's going to work, but it sounds amazing. So, next on the list is Starforge. They recently had a very successful... Uh, I think it was Indiegogo campaign. Yeah, it wasn't Kickstarter. I think it was Indiegogo. It was very successful. It's... It's shaping up to be a pretty insane game. It's going to have a lot of multiplayer capabilities in it, a lot of multiplayer game modes, and it has just crazy construction. There's... It's going to be a game all about procedural generation and constructing things and building bases and combining pieces for weapons, I think, too. Like, this is like a quadruple chainsaw you're looking at here. Let me play this. The Oh, it also has very detailed physics. They're kind of wonky. Keep in mind, this is an early alpha, so that's probably why they're wonky. But yeah, you can just build so much stuff. Let me try and look for some shooting here. Yeah, some wonky physics, but also very detailed physics, which should lead to some interesting gameplay. <laughs> God, that looks ridiculous. Uh, yeah, and there's, oh yeah, there's even structural integrity. If you build something like that where it's not supported, it will collapse. It's going to be very cool. Can't wait to see what happens with that. Okay, next is Starbound. This is a game that has at least one of the one of the people that worked on Terraria is working on this game. There might be more, I'm not sure. Um and it definitely has a very Terraria-esque look to it. Honestly, to me, it looks like it looks like what I wish Terraria was. Terraria was interesting. I thought it was pretty good, but I just wish it had more. It kind of turned into a grind fest, and I just wish it had more exploration, more random generation, and more procedural everything, more construction, just more stuff. Um, and this looks like it's going to provide it. It it looks like it's going to be a pretty freaking massive game, and it has tons of procedural generation for basically everything. And it looks, it looks really cool. It's gonna have all sorts of things like fluid physics. Here, let me play a bit of a video. Here's a building demonstration. It's going to have tons of construction. Looks super cool. Let me see if I can get this water demo to buffer pretty fast. I want to show you the water physics. Let's see. Where is it going to be here? Uh, here we go. Shows a leak. Please buffer fast. I don't want to just be sitting here waiting for it. And it's, it's, yeah, it's, there we go. Water physics. I love water physics. Oh, and now it's buffering again. Screw you, YouTube. It's not my internet connection. Definitely not my internet connection. It's YouTube. Always YouTube. Okay, next game is Routine. Oh my god, this game just oh, fucking blows my mind. With how... It's another it's another horror game set in space, which, again, I love, even though it's... Even though it's an incredibly rare setting for a game. Horror game set in space. Um, There seems to be a surprising amount of them coming out. And this one, out of all the horror games set in space coming out, this one interests me the most because it just is dripping with atmosphere. Let me play a little bit of this teaser. Now 
Now, does that not look fucking amazing? This is an incredibly good looking game. And I... I think I would like it for the atmosphere alone, even if the gameplay ended up completely sucking. I think I would probably buy it just... just for the atmosphere of the world. It looks incredible. Alright, next on the list is... Quadra Literal Cowboy. Or, sorry, Quadra... Quadra... Quadrilateral. There. Quadrilateral Cowboy. A 20th century cyberpunk. Yeah, the website for this game is very bare bones. It doesn't really tell you much. Actually, I learned far more than this from an article about it I read on Rock Paper Shotgun. I don't know why there's not very much information on the website. But anyway, suffice to say, it is a game where you hack. You pull out your crappy little laptop, open up a command line sort of thing, and get to hacking by typing in actual code. Um, it's, it's not coding from an actual language. You know, it's not like C++ or something. But it's very similar to... like C++ or Java. Or any programming language like that. So it's kind of, I guess, simplified code. So you don't need to be a coder to play the game. But nonetheless, you will be typing a type of code. A type of... I'll just stop saying a type of code. <laughs> You'll be typing code stuff to make stuff happen. You'll be hacking things. And I think that's a brilliant idea. I think it's because I just took one semester of, uh, of programming that this interests me so much. I, I don't know how interesting it would be to someone who hasn't programmed. Or isn't interested in programming, but... I'm at least a bit interested in programming and took one semester of it, so I know a bit about it. And given those two things, my interest and my small but significant experience, those two things make me really fascinated to play this game. So, next game is Make. M-A-K, I think it's pronounced Make. Yes, pronounced Make. This is a construction game. It's a crazy, weird construction game that kind of reminds me a little bit of Gary's mod. Here, let me play a bit of this. Hey, uh, we're going to sh show you a little bit about the building system in our game. Oh, thank you for rebuffering, YouTube. That's great. Now it's going to take 50 million years. Let me just look at this little thing down here. Uh, here we go. This should work. Are you going to buffer? Screw you, YouTube. 480p. There we go. You can drop it and break it apart to reuse the cubes. Oh, great. Thanks, YouTube. So yeah, it's gonna have tons of construction. You can connect, uh... It's early on, so I'm sure there'll be more features than this, but some of the things you can do is stack blocks on top of each other, power them, um, connect them with wires or rope or something like that. That's what, remind, that's what uh, reminded me of Gary's Mod, is that whole rope thing. But yeah, it's gonna have a ton of construction, and it looks interesting. Actually, this game went up on... I think it was Kickstarter. It was either Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Um, yeah, I'm not sure which one. But anyway, the Kickstarter uh, failed pretty poorly, surprisingly. And since then, I haven't heard anything about it. If you go to the main site, I don't think there's any new news. Yeah, there's not... Any, yep, there's not any new news. It looks like it posted a Kickstarter, failed, and then since then has just kind of dropped off the map. So I don't know what's happening with the game or whether it's ever going to come out, but I hope it does, and it looks interesting. Next on the list is Blockscape. Why do I have a YouTube video open? Blockscape. Yes, I'll show you this first, and then the video. <clears throat> So this is a game that's basically a lot like Minecraft. I I'm sure the developer knows it's a lot like Minecraft. They may have even attended it to be like that. And everyone's going to compare it to Minecraft, so I'll just say it too. It's a lot like Minecraft. Uh, at the moment, probably the biggest difference it has from Minecraft is that it doesn't look like shit. Because Minecraft really looks like complete shit. So... 
here, watch this video of the game not looking like shit. This is a video about the new foliage system. So at the moment, it's a pretty damn good looking building type game that allows you to build in, uh, I think, more than blocks. I think you can build in all sorts of different shapes. Yeah, like wedges and stuff. So I don't know what's going to happen to it as far as gameplay-wise. I don't know if it's going to... Uh, you know, I don't know what it's going to do gameplay-wise. could turn into something interesting. It could turn into uh, just a boring sort of Minecraft clone. I don't know. Either way, I'm keeping an eye on it because it uh, it seems interesting. I think the ga the world could always use more building games. There needs to be more building games. I like building games. Do I have another? No, I don't. Okay, I need to collect the rest of my games up here on my test bar or uh, tab bar, whatever. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. So here's the rest of the games I have on my list. So first one here is Contrast, a game of light and shadow. It's a... I think it's a puzzle platformer. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't been following it incredibly closely, but what really interests me about it is two things. One, it has an interesting setting. It's set in the 1920s. And two, it, I think, allows you to switch between being normal and being a shadow. Let me show you what I mean. Here we go, here's a better example. So yes, you can actually be a shadow. Literally. Stay so I don't exactly know how that... Uh, I don't know all the possibilities that could spring from that interesting gameplay mechanic, but I'm betting there's a ton. So that's why I'm looking forward to seeing what becomes of it. Next is Black Space by Pixel Foundry. This game did a Kickstarter recently that unfortunately failed. Which actually surprised me. It's it's sort of like a mixture of I it's like a mixture of RTS and tower defense set in space and you control a spacecraft. It's an interesting kind of melting pot of a bunch of different game ideas, and it just looks great. Let's see, did I show you controlling it? No. Oh, no, there we go, yep. So yeah, you control that craft. I actually find the video of, uh, I find the part of the video that shows you controlling a craft far more interesting than the explosions. It just looks like it would be such a joy to control, doesn't it? Yeah, there's another video somewhere that shows more of the movement. Um, and you can actually... You can actually, like, blow holes in... Uh, in the asteroids. Your base is actually built on an asteroid. Yeah, it just... It sounds like a really cool game idea. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, the Kickstarter failed, so... I don't know exactly what's going to happen with it. There's a little bit here, so what happens next? We will continue working hard on the game, but the release date will be pushed back a bit, of course, because now they can't work on it as fast as they could have. So it sounds like it's probably still going to come out at some point, but who the heck knows when. But definitely looking forward to it. Next is Montas, if I'm pronouncing that right. Montas? Montas? I don't know. I think they did an Indiegogo. Kickstarter, but I think it miserably failed for some reason. There hasn't been much information released about the game. So I don't really know exactly what you do, but it's... It's, it's like a creepy horror sort of exploration game. Here, let me show a little bit of the trailer. It's just eerie. I'll be quiet for a second.
Yeah, so it's some sort of weird, eerie exploration game, I think. I don't know. It, it sounds interesting, so I don't... I, I hope it comes out. I don't know if it's still being worked on or what after the failed um, Indiegogo campaign, but I hope it comes out. Next is A Short Tale of Solitude, which there's very little detail about this game, so I can't be terribly interested in it. I will say one thing. It doesn't... It, it's a really shitty looking game. Just graphic... Just graphically speaking, it looks... Here, let me zoom in. It looks like it was made like 15 years ago. I mean, it looks like PS2 era graphics. It looks like shit. But what interests me is the fact that you play as some sort of a sick, demented orphan. And everything looks weird. Yeah, it's a very strange horror game where you play some sort of a weird, demented, evil orphan child or something. I'm not really sure, but it sounds interesting. So even though it looks, even though it looks horrible, hopefully the game will actually be interesting. Next up is Under the Ocean. <clears throat> it says it's a sequel to um, Under the Garden. I don't actually know what Under the Garden is. I never heard of it, and I've never played it. It looks like a souped-up version of Under the Garden, I guess. Because Under the Garden is like an 8-bit look, and Under the Ocean looks a hell of a lot better. Anyway, some sort of a 3 side-scrolling builder thing where you play some sort of a weird blue man with mutton chops or something? I don't know, give it a look. Here, look. Placing a back wall. Finishing the foundations. A nice solid plank makes a good roof. Yep, so there is building a little shack. There's some swimming, there's some more swimming. There's some stuff and oh no, it's buffering. And other ones are peaceful. Okay, so yeah, I guess you're stranded uh, on an island and you need to build stuff and survive, I think. Anyway, it looks interesting. Next is Consortium, also another failed Kickstarter, but they are still working on the game. I don't care for the graphical style very much. It's got sort of a a bit of a cartoony sort of look that I don't like. Uh, but the gameplay and the storyline and just uh, just everything else about the game sounds really interesting. It's it seems like it's a mixture of. Hold on, let me find it. Mm -mm -mm, where is it? Yeah, combining the core mechanics of a first-person shooter with the fully interactive conversation of a role-playing or adventure game. So it's a heavily conversation-based sort of adventure RPG first-person shooter. It's like a bunch of things all in one. And it sounds like it will have an actually deep storyline and actually interesting characters. Which is good, because that's something lacking from about 99% of all games. So I'm definitely interested in this. Alright, next up on the list is Topia Online. This is a bit of a strange one. I just learned about this in the last week. It's actually an MMO. And so far, within... Within, like, the past five years, I haven't been interested in MMOs at all. Like, they just keep... The companies just keep releasing the dullest, shittiest, most generic, mind-bogglingly dull grind fests just again and again just churning out these shitty MMOs you see another one and it's just I just think I've already played that and it wasn't good why would I play it again you know I I just don't connect with MMOs because they just keep being churned out with the same formula most of them are exactly the same some of them do things a little bit differently, like, uh, for example, The Secret World. It did a bit different, 
but it still ended up being, you know, kind of a shitty grind fest. It, it didn't fundamentally change my problem, the problem that I have with MMOs. So I haven't been interested in an MMO in a long time. And this changes that. This is the first MMO that I think I might actually play. Um, they had a kick, I think it was a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo, some sort of crowdfunding campaign, and I, I don't know if it failed or what, because I wasn't look, I didn't know the game existed when this was ongoing, but they actually shut down their crowd, their crowdfunding campaign and switched over to private, <clears throat> uh, private funding, where you can pay to get into the alpha or beta. So I don't know if it failed. I didn't, I don't know if they just projected the numbers would be too low, so they just cut it off midway through, or if they just genuinely decided that crowdfunding wasn't the way to go and for some reason switched over to um, just directly selling alpha access. So I don't know what happened with that, but either way, it's uh, still being developed. And what's interesting about the game, well, I just realized I haven't actually mentioned what's interesting about it, so let me get to that. It's a game where the content is created by people. The users, you, the player. And I mean that on a very fundamental level. I don't think there's any video that succinctly displays that, so I don't have any trailers here to show. Uh, well, okay, let me try this. Let's see. No, it's 14 minutes. Let me see. I don't think this is going to work. It's probably better if I just describe it. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, I'll just describe it. So what's interesting about it is that people actually create basically everything in the game. You actually... Users can write scripts. And I mean literal scripts, actual coding, JavaScript. And actually create enemies. All the enemies that exist within the world are created by users. Every single one. All coded by people. Everything's user content. I I don't know how it could work. <laughs> I really don't know how the hell that can work and how having everything in the world user-created can work. Apparently people can even create quests or are going to be able to create quests and stuff like that. So users create quests, users code quests, users code all the enemies. Users make basically everything. Just like a crazy MMO sandbox. And I don't know how all of that stuff is going to work and how it's all going to gel together. But it sounds utterly fascinating. And it's the first MMO in so long that has actually interested me. So I'm really looking forward to it. Next up on the list is Anti-Chamber. A mind-bending psychological exploration game. So, as you can probably tell by the crazy colors here, this is a crazy game. And indeed it is. It's actually coming out very soon, January 31st, 2013, which it's the 25th right now, so it's coming out very soon. A little bit less than one week. <clears throat> um, it's, it's a hard game to pin down from what I've read from previews, but basically it's a crazy, insane puzzle game that messes with your brain and just... It's like a ex total experimental design. Like, I think the developers experimenting with the fundamentals of game design to make these puzzles. It's... go read some previews. I don't think I can explain it very well, and I don't even think the previews can explain it very well. I think it's something you're probably just going to have to play for yourself. It, it just... it sounds totally fascinating, and I'm really excited for it. Let me play a bit of this trailer. Which, of course, doesn't explain anything, because I don't think you can really explain the game. Yeah, the only thing this shows is that it looks insane. Which is awesome. And I have a feeling it's going to play just as insane as it looks. Alright, there's two left now. Robots is the next one, which I just learned about a couple days ago. I know very little about it. The reason I'm interested in the game is because it looks awesome and allows you to do awesome stuff. That's literally all I know about it. What I know about it is what you see in this trailer, which is you get to construct robots and fight with them, which is awesome. Take a look. That 
that just looks like a shit ton of fun. All right. Uh, okay, here. The last game on my list is The Witness. It's a game created by Jonathan Blow, who made Braid, which is one of the most popular indie games ever made. Um, it's There's not that much information about... Uh, out about really what you're going to do exactly gameplay wise um, all I know is that you're on an island here actually let me find a screenshot of the island uh, here we go this is a newer snapshot of the island some things are placeholders as you can obviously see like those buildings but yeah you're on an island and it's a puzzle game and you're solving puzzles on this island it's an island of incredible contrasts different regions here actually there's a map yeah, island partition. You can see desert, orchard, lake, hub, peninsula, logging, keep, bay, river, marsh, mountain. There's just extreme contrasts of environments. On this fairly small island. And you get to explore it and solve the puzzles. Um, Jonathan Blow's most popular game, Braid, um, I was going to say his first game, but that's actually not true. He's made other games, I just don't know what they are. And Braid was his first popular one, so I'm just going to say his first popular game, Braid, um, is a game that I respect a hell of a lot for how fine-tuned the design of it is, but it's also a game that I've never played and don't really have any interest in playing. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with puzzle games, but The Witness, I think... I think might change that. I think it might be a puzzle game that I'm going to love. I can't be sure until I play it, obviously. But where I wasn't interested in Braid, I am now very interested in The Witness. Yeah, Jonathan Blow is just... He's brilliant. He really is brilliant, so I'm very excited to play it. And let me just show you, by the way, even... Hell, even if you're not really interested in playing the game, I think this... This, um blog about making the game is interesting just for a bunch of other reasons. If you're interested in game design, if you're interested in coding, if you're interested in just what goes on behind the scenes in making a game, I would recommend reading this blog. I would just check out some of the ridiculously detailed posts here. Look, how do you say plane in The Witness? This is about one of their coders trying to fix a very strange issue that took a lot of time to fix. And there's actually... It, it's ridiculously detailed. There's raw code. I don't know what the hell that stuff means. <laughs> it, some seriously advanced stuff here. Tons, huge, huge articles about what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, let me scroll down. Um, yeah, all sorts of thoughts about some other things behind the scenes. Thoughts about app store curation, island snapshots, some period of work he was doing on the game. There, it's another... Fixing some more issues. Oh, this. Oh my god, I read this article a while ago. It's about mapping the island's walkable surfaces. It's a huge article about how to, well, how to map the island's walkable surfaces. Basically by making, like, a sort of, uh, I guess, algorithm? Is that the right word? That just bumps into everything on the island. Sort of like a dumb robot that just keeps bumping into the walls, trying to map out where is walkable. Here, let me show some examples. Uh, here we go, yeah. Just kind of like bumping all over the place, searching in grids and trying to map out where you can walk in the game world. Something I had never even considered doing. I've never considered that. I've never even thought about that. I've n I didn't even know that was the thing. I'd never even conceived of the idea of mapping out a game's walkable surfaces. Why would you want to do that? How would you do that? All of those questions are answered in this huge, fascinating article. Look at this. Look at how big this is. This is one article. I'm still on the same article. Still same article. There we go. You could spend like a half hour. Maybe even an hour. Just reading this article. Well, okay, probably not an hour. Probably a half hour. It's in There's just some incredibly detailed and fascinating posts about what's going on behind the scenes of this game. 
It's ridiculous. Oh, and there's also some really cool graphical articles about some cool graphical features. For example, let's find something here. All sorts of cool stuff. More code. Here we go. It's No, no, that's not it. What is this? No. No, no, no. Island snapshot. Nope, nope, nope. Mm. Oh, I know it's here. Oh, here's an article about making water. It's an issue they were having, I guess, and they tried to fix that. That kind of water foam or reflection or something. It's where it touches objects. There's some more raw, crazy code there. In-game color grading. Uh... Yeah, there's ton. You could spend, you could spend probably an entire freaking day if you read every post that's been put on this blog. It's fascinating. So even if you're not interested in the game, I'd recommend checking out some of the articles because it's really cool. I've never, I've literally never seen so much information posted about what's going on behind the scenes of a game. Sometimes developers don't say anything about what's going on behind the scenes. Sometimes they say a little bit, you know, updates here and there. <clears throat> and then at the extreme end of information is The Witness, where just, like, everything is posted. It's just a degree of transparency that I didn't know anyone was even willing to do. But I'm so glad that they're willing to do it, because it's awesome. So, there you have it. There's the last game on my list of interesting game upcoming games. Uh, so, I hope you have found... Some interesting games that you had not heard of before. And that's it.